Juice 6 to 8 channel. I'm Ashwarya and I'm here with a very interesting question for all of you. How are microorganisms involved in bioremediation? Now I'm sure all of you would have wondered as soon as you saw the thumbnail. Now what does this bioremediation? Why should I learn about it? And why do I care if some microbes are doing some bioremediation? How is it? How does it matter to me? Now let me tell you one thing. This term, bioremediation, that you see right here is very, very important, especially in the upcoming future. So as you grow and as you are all such curious students of science, you will understand that it is important to take up sustainable practices so that we can make a better future on Earth. And this is something that we must all be aware of. So without wasting any more time, we'll jump right into it. But of course, before I get started with what is bioremediation and why we need to learn about it, if this is the first time that you are visiting our 6 to 8 channel, I would like to welcome you to the channel. And I would request you to be part of our universe and hit that subscribe button. We are a very small family, but a very loving family and we are always open to making more friends. And in your channel, and in this particular channel, I would say, we cater to your academic sessions, we cater to all those curious questions you wonder about science and math. And you get everything here. So all I would do is to request you to hit that subscribe button and help us achieve 25,000 subscribers. Now, of course, I'm sure you would have also seen the term title. In the title, you would have seen, right? Champions, that was written. Now, you are all our champions. But who is a champion in your life? If you were to ask me, I would say that it's my parents because they made me the champion that I am today. And I'm sure it's the same for you as well. Which is why this particular offer, wherein we give you a chance where you can gift your parents a trip to Australia, which is absolutely free of cost, right? And all you need to do is just enroll yourself for the Baiju Scholarship Test. Now you see the time is almost running out and the 4th of, exam, or 4th of September is the last date for the exam, right? So make sure that you register right now because top three students will win this chance to fly to Australia and watch the T20 match live, right? Yes, you heard that right? You will be watching it live. And all you need to do is to give the Baiju scholarship test. Link is there in the description box and you can learn and you can check more about it on the same. So, of course, with the small information, because we're running out of time for this, I thought I'd quickly remind you and we'll get started with our class. Yes? Now, like I told you, sustainable practices is what is necessary for Earth, right? And of late, in the recent past, due to certain practices that have been followed by us, we see that there has been higher rates of pollution, which has led to climate change and which has eventually led to global warming. Now, this is not ideal for survival which is why we need to take some actionable steps to protect our planet Earth. Now, various things that we've done in the past has affected and has brought to the kind of situation that we have today, whether it's urbanization, population explosion, or technological advancement. Now, there are small steps that we can do as individuals, and we're all aware of that. But there are some things for which we wonder, right? Now, if something like this happens, how do we tackle it? For example, there has been a big oil spill on a major ocean, right? In a big ocean, there has been an oil spill. Mom, what do we do as individuals to prevent that, right? Or how do we make sure that it doesn't happen again? Or if it happens, what do we do? Yes? Or for example, there has been a big leak or there has been, um, you know, what do you say? There has been a lot of garbage which has gotten accumulated over a period of time. And we know that plastic is non-degradable. Now, in such cases, what do we do? How do we tackle all of these things? Which is why we have scientists. Curious as they are ever, they always try to find the answer. They don't think to themselves that, oh, maybe this cannot happen, but rather, how do I find the answer to this particular question? And that is how they stumbled upon some microorganisms which help with bioremediation. But then again, okay, we've understood that, you know, microbes are there and, you know, we have all these problems. But what is this bioremediation? Let's first understand that and form our fundamental. Now, if I were to literally split this word, right? Bio, of course, we know is life. Now, when we talk about remediation, it means it is to find a remedy, right? 
or you can even say to restore something. For example, there has been a building, right? And the building has gotten damaged. Now we can restore the building and make it as new. Yes, that is what we mean by restore or to give you a simple analogy, what we mean by remediation. And to technically define it, it is using microbes or other organisms to degrade or remove pollutants from the environment. So let's understand this better with an example. Now earlier I had mentioned about an example that is oil spills, right? So sometimes oil tankers, when they carry oil from the marine offshores and you know they bring it, the tanker will leak, right? And when the tanker leaks, the oil will now start spreading inside the ocean. Now this is completely not okay because we see that various living organisms are found in the ocean and they'll all start to get damaged because they, as you can see here, they tend to get trapped in the oil, right? And if this oil is closer to the shore, then even the animals and the organisms that we find in the shore will start to get affected. Now, of course, human beings want to find a solution, but the solution that is being implemented right now is not again a very ideal solution. So what they use is they use something called a sawdust, right? So as you can see here, they use sawdust, which is like the powdery substance that is there. They will spread it into the oil or they will put it all across the wherever there's been an oil leak. Now what happens is that this soil or sawdust that is there will absorb all the oil. But this is not ideal, like I told you, because this is very fine and powdery. So it will get dispersed in the ocean. And again, this can be harmful for the living organisms if they consume it or, you know, it may even hurt them physically as well, which is why it is not very ideal. So which is why the scientists were like, okay, this is not an ideal solution and we need to find something better and something more safe, right? Something sustainable. So what can we do? And that is when they stumbled upon a particular microorganism that is Alcanivorax borcumensis. Now, this particular microorganism, as you can see, was naturally found in areas closer to where they would extract the oil. And this feeds on the oil that is there, or we call them as oil feeding microbes, right? Now, what do they do, right? And how do they help us? Now, this particular microbe, so this is actually a bacteria that is there, right? So this is a bacterium. Now, what happens is that if there is some amount of oil that we find on the, you know, oceans, what happens is that these bacterium or these bacteria will get attracted to it and they will slowly start moving closer to it. Now, what they will do first is they will break down the large droplets of oil that are there into smaller droplets or we can say that they will emulsify it. And once they break it down into that, the next thing that they do is very interesting. So I'm going to use another color to show you. They'll start, so many of them will start and they'll, you know, increase in number, right? And they'll start to form a layer around the oil, right? So they'll start to form a layer around it. And we call this as a biofilm, yes? So no, I'm using some technical terms, but it's good for you to understand. They'll form a biofilm around the oil. And then what they'll do? they'll start to attack it inwards. So they'll start feeding on the oil from all directions. Thereby, they will decrease the amount of oil that we find in the ocean. Now, of course, this is very advantageous because it's not affecting any other organism. It has ca it's causing no harm, right? But it's feeding on the oil that can potentially harm other organisms. Yes? So this is how it has removed or it has degraded the pollutant that we found. Thereby, it is implementing bioremediation. Similarly, another bacterium that we have stumbled upon is Igenella psychiensis. Now, this right here is very popularly known as the plastic eating bacteria, right? Now, of course, one limitation with this particular species is that it will eat only certain types of bacteria. But, you know, scientists being curious as ever. And if any of you are curious later on as you grow up and you become scientists, maybe you can find a way to make Igenella eat more kinds of plastic. And thereby, we will actually be tackling one of the largest problems, right? We have used so much of plastic, it is not being degraded, and now it is polluting the soil, it is polluting the water, right? So we will be able to find an answer. Now, similarly, apart from microbes, we also see that plants, some of the plants that are there, have the ability to absorb some heavy metals, right? So they have the, so in some cases, we see that soil gets polluted by heavy metals. 
Then again, if soil gets polluted, this affects the crop yield, it affects the plants. But there are some varieties of plants, right? For example, we have, if you were to ask me an example, we have amaranthus, right? Amaranthus is a kind of plant which has the ability to absorb some heavy metals, thereby helping with soil bioremediation. So bioremediation, as you know, are, is a kind of process, I would say, or a kind of technique that we can implement to tackle some of the problems that we find in the environment. And bioremediation, of course, is safe and sustainable because we're using some microorganisms, you're using living organisms to tackle it. But then again, there are various limitations to it as well. There's a lot of research which is still being followed and still being done. Because when we're using microbes, we know that there are good microbes, but there's also a potential that if we overuse the amount of microbes for, if, which are, you know, not there in the natural habitat. For example, let's take the example of the bacteria, the oil-eating bacteria. Naturally, they're present only in small in number. But let's say that because we want to tackle an oil spill, we put more than what is necessary. Then we, may, we do not really know how they will react to the environment. So all of that is still something that they are working on. They are understanding the nature, the behavioral aspects of these microbes so that it can be fully safe and can be used at a larger scale. So this is all about what is bioremediation and how microorganisms help us with it. Now, of course, if you want to know more about all of this, do let me know in the comment section below because you know that I always check your comments. And of course, I would request all of you to hit the Telegram button, right? There's a link in the description box. Stay subscribed to our Telegram channel as well. Because in our Telegram channel, we come live every Friday. And of course, apart from that, there's homework questions, session PDFs that we give you. There's a lot happening in our Telegram community. So you do not want to miss anything out. Now with this, of course, I'd like to say bye because you know that the 6 to 8 channel has always got you covered. Please show us your love by hitting that like button, sharing this with your friends and staying subscribed to our channel. Hoping to see you very soon again. Bye bye and have a nice day.